good, good sir. I'm ready. Hey, I'm Raymond. You're watching RPAD TV 3000 with my very special guest today, award-winning author and my good friend, John Foster. John, what's going on, man? Great to see you, Raymond. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, how is everything in New York? Uh, it's it's wet and humid. Is it hot know? time, summer in the city? Yeah, actually, it's it's not terrible today. It's just really sticky, but yeah, it, it hit it hit ninety, and I know that's not a lot for a lot of people, but it sucks. And you know, it's when you hit ninety in New York City, it really yeah. sucks. And it was definitely the back of my neck was dirty and gritty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I, someone old enough to get that reference. <laughs> right? Yeah, no one understood. <laughs> um, what's going on with your books? Are you working on anything new or exciting that you can talk about? I am. I am working on a book called, um, well, my book Leech just came out yes. um, recently. And so that's been getting a lot of great word of mouth. And so I'm excited. Um, I just actually sent a copy over to someone in England. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And I, and I, you know, we were messaging back and forth and I said, you know, the, the postage is like three times the cost of the book. She was like, ah, I'm fine. But mm. I am working, I'm revising another novel right now called Hate House. It was a dark psychological thriller. Very so. cool. For everyone out there, John makes some really interesting and unique books. Here's one of my personal favorites. Oh, right on. <laughs> about a mentally ill assassin, like most of the best stories are. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Everyone's ill, just like me and you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I wanna, I'm trying to get sponsorship from, uh, from BetterHelp. It's one of those, those online... Um, psychologist service mm -hmm. and the, the promos write themselves i'm like if you're as messed up as i am then you should go to better help <laughs> it's like do you have a hard time getting through the week betterhelp.com is for you oh yes i feel this i feel this i could i could have used them at 4 a.m when i got up this morning <laughs> i could use them daily man yeah <laughs> Today's episode is all about Saturday Night Live. Um, a lot of big happenings. The end of last season, it was announced they were losing four cast members, uh, Pete Davidson, Kate McKinnon, A.D. Bryant, and one of the goofy white guys. Uh, 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 Kyle Mooney. Kyle, Kyle Mooney, yes. All I could think, I was like, curly hair, bad hair. <laughs> I'm like, is it Beck? Is it Alex? They're, they're all like, I mean, they're yeah. all talented and wonderful, but. Right, right. I get the white people confused. I'm sorry, John. I don't know, but quick props to uh, to Kyle Mooney. Uh, Kanye was on once. This was a year ago before he went insane. Did you see that one? <laughs> yes. So and and Kyle Mooney does this whole thing, and they they sort of filmed it, and they've got home video from when he was a kid, and he was like break dancing and rapping, and he challenges Kanye to a rap battle in the hall. It was it was hilarious. Like you do. <laughs> yeah, and, and he just got destroyed because he was just awkward and white. But he walks away later and he's like, I can't believe I just destroyed Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah, it was brilliant. So one of the phrases that I hate the most in the world, and I've been hearing it since high school, is SNL isn't funny anymore. And I hate when people say that because it's, for me, it, it's stupid. It's lazy. Because SNL is always funny. Of course, there are peaks and valleys, mm -hmm. but comedy and humor are subjective. So SNL will always be the funniest at the time you invested the most in it. You know, whether for a lot of people, it's high school or college around that age where, where you watched it the most. So you were into SNL the most. Um, but the show itself, I think, is always funny. And it's incredibly difficult knowing a, a live weekly program just producing, writing, and performing in it. So I have mad respect for everyone involved in this show. I mean, if you hear someone say SNL isn't funny anymore, do you, do you agree with my point of view? Do you have your own? How, how do you see it? Oh, I think it's, I think it's great. I mean, it does have peaks and valleys. Yeah. I, think, I think we've been in a, in a definite um, uh, high point for the last bunch of years, um, largely, yeah. largely due to um, the women that are on the show. I think that oh, yeah. the real stars, uh, it's real. It's a shame to see uh, McKinnon go. A.D. Bryant is freaking hilarious. Yeah. We still have Cecily Strong uh, staying. I always want to call her Ces Cecily Tyson. Um, <laughs> They're very, very different person. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> Vanessa Bear left a couple years ago, and she was yeah. great. Um, but some of the newer ladies are great. Uh, Melissa Villasenor, I think, is fantastic. Uh, Chloe you know, they, they don't know how to use her. They, you're right. I think she is terribly underutilized. But when she is on, when she does stuff, I think she kills it. Yeah, yeah. And I am partial to to anybody that sings in the show, so I yeah. have a soft spot in my heart for her. Yeah, and I love her stand up. Yeah, her stand up is good. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and it's not that they actually have a lot of a lot of great guys around the show too. Um, Chris Red has been on for a couple of years, and he is yeah. hilarious. Um, in fact, I don't know if you've seen the movie Werewolves, uh, Werewolf, Werewolves Within. No. Um, okay, so it's basically a two person movie. Um, it's these two writers in a, in a cabin way out in the middle of nowhere, kind of telling each other scary stories to try to scare each other. And the only other character that comes in is they order a pizza. And Chris Red hmm. is the pizza delivery guy. Okay. And they bust out a lot of drugs and booze, and they all get totally shit-faced. And Chris Red just goes off, and he's really, really funny. That's awesome. It sounds, uh, sounds cool. I want to check it out. I mean, he yeah. recently had a sketch where... They were doing the Oscars, and he he played Will Smith, and I thought I that one. <laughs> he was uh, tremendous in that. Um, that was the uh, Jared Carmichael. Episode. Oh, yeah, I remember Jared Carmichael because uh, he's got a Netflix special that I want to check out because he was funny. He he was great, and yeah, the special is great. Um, Rathaniel is his newest special. You know what? I'm writing his name down because I forgot what his name was. Aha, uh -huh. Jared Carmichael. That's right. It is. He has a uh, three specials on Netflix, I believe. And oh wow, it's kind of cool seeing the progression of of him personally. Because the first one, you know, he's making jokes about hitting on women, having abortions, mm -hmm. and then the most recent special, he comes out of the closet as gay. So, just watching his personal evolution and also his growth as a comedian. Um, the first two specials are pretty standard, straight up stand up, but the third one was pretty unique. It was a lot of personal crowd interaction, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the crowd work. Um, and, you know, it was, it was very, very personal, telling stories about his parents uh, coming out and talking to people in the crowd. It, it's, it's really good. Oh, that um, sounds good. I'm going to check it out. Now, let's get back to the show. Saturday Night yeah. Live, of course, is all about the. The talent. And uh, I want to talk to you. Let's start with favorite cast members. You want to, how about we start there? Um, yeah, if we're talking about recent cast members, then I'd say, I mean, McKinnon is just, you always yeah. got to kind of put her in. Um, Vanessa Bear, who I mentioned, uh, who left, um, I, was just hilarious. I thought she was really funny. Um, and, and, uh, Cecily Strong. In fact, Vanessa Bear and Cecily Strong had this funny bit that they would do together. And they did it like four times. Um, and it would start out, one of them would, and they're both just really wasted wearing tight dresses. And one would say, we're not porn stars anymore. <laughs> and they would, they would have like Gucci handbags and try to, you know, sell them so that they could do commercials for Gucci and get free stuff. But they would just stumble through things. And then there would be these just like total raunchy non sequiturs. Um, outstanding. They were brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad that uh, that Cecily's still on the show because I think she's yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, she's she's one of my favorites out of the newer people as well. Um, Got to give props to Bowen Yang for being the first Asian American uh, cast uh -huh. member. I'm very proud that he's doing well. Um, when they let him rip, he's fucking great because he just goes for it. Oh yeah. Big time. He had that one. Um, he was the iceberg that got hit by the Titanic. It was brilliant. It was <laughs> killed me. Yes. Absolutely killed me. Yes. Um, he had one with uh, recently with Benedict Cumberbatch where they, they were working at Chuck E. Cheese. And <laughs> they were like the animatronic uh, characters oh, right, the right. on the stage. And uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch totally went for it. And I really appreciated that. Um, we'll talk more about the guests later. That That's a big part of it as well. Um, but yeah, your favorites can be anyone throughout the history of the show. Well, I think, you know, I, they're obviously the, the old, you know, like the, the original ones, like Bill Murray and Eddie Murphy. I think Eddie Murphy's probably the single best 
performer that's ever been on the show. Um, right. Belushi, because he was insane. Um, you know, I mean, Samurai Delicatessen is just. <laughs> yeah, I think that 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 70s crew and the early 80s crew, they had an unfair advantage of being on cocaine the whole time. I was just going to say, yeah, they were completely <laughs> blocked. <blotto. laughs> so there's no fear. There's no yeah. fear. And you have lots of ideas. Yeah. So, um, but for me, I didn't, I appreciate and I've watched back a lot of those guys, but um, that wasn't the crew that I grew up with. I was probably a little bit later. Yeah. And you're a little bit older than me. So that's part of it. Um, but some of my favorites, uh, Will Ferrell, I think, is tremendous. He has so many great characters. I loved uh, when he would do his James Lipton and do the Inside the Actor Studio. He had uh, the male cheerleaders, um, Alex Trebek, and Celebrity Jeopardy. I once, uh, I once worked in an office with Sherry O'Tiri. Oh wow! Who was who was actually super funny and nice and cool in person. This was before SNL. She seemed cute as a button. Was she like that back then? Uh, she's a little fiery. Wow. So, okay. So she, I mean, she's tiny. Yeah. You know, but but there's cute. I wouldn't say just because she's definitely tough as nails. Interesting. Um, but so, I mean, I liked her. I thought she was really cool. Very cool. Um, how about for the weekend update, guys? Who was your favorite at the anchor desk? Um. I thought Amy Poehler was great. Um, Seth Meyer was great. Um, I think I think uh, Colin Jost and Michael Che are a great team. Yeah, I, lo- um, I think they're doing well. I love when yeah. they do the joke swap. That's I, I was just going to say, yeah, year. they play off each other so well, um, and it's hilarious to watch them do the joke swap. And just watch their faces fall as they have to <laughs> yeah. read what they're going to read. You see, like the second they see it on the prompter, I'm like, oh, I got to. Oh, see. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for um, me, it's Norm Macdonald. Um, yeah, he's one of my favorite comedians in the world. Uh, I thought he was the best at Weekend Update, but he also had uh, the Burt Reynolds part on Celebrity Jeopardy. Uh huh. So that's always good. I mean, Chevy Chase has never been my favorite. We're going way back, but. Yeah, he had some iconic lines. Um, you know, I'm Chevy Chase and you're not. Was yes. A line. And then my favorite is Jane, you ignorant slut. Like, yeah, Ackroyd. Yeah. Oh, was that Ackroyd? That. Yeah, I believe that was Ackroyd. Okay. Um, Caleb says Jostin Che have a great dynamic. Norm was probably the best. So yeah, he, I mean Norm is Norm is a giant. Yeah, and uh, he has a recent Netflix special that mm-hmm. it, it's. It's a really beautiful thing. Um, I think it's going to make me sad, though. It will, but it'll also make you appreciate him. I mean, because the first is uh, the the backdrop is he did he was planning a stand up act, but then you know the quarantine happened, right? Uh, so and he was going to have a procedure for his cancer, and he wasn't sure how he would be after it, so he decided to tape his set at home. You know, no audience, obviously, right? Um, and he did it in one take, and it, it's fantastic stuff. But then that's followed by a bunch of his friends and peers talking about the show and talking about him. It's Letterman, uh, Dave Chappelle, David Spade, Sandler, and Molly Shannon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just talking about him, the influence that he had on their lives. And, yeah, it's it's it will make you sad, but it will make you... But it's good. It's fantastic. Love that guy. Um, I already said Bowen Yang, so yes, I have to have to put him in there. So, is there anyone else you want to shout out before we move on? No, As I think as... I've, I think I've. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, he he's he's been off for a few years now doing Barry at I think HBO, but uh, oh, Bill, yeah. Bill hey. Hater, Hater's good. He's amazing. Um, he's just one of those guys that's so malleable. Yeah. Um and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Stefan, of course, was just hilarious. And if I if I remember correctly, part of why he was always breaking character and dying, you know, and just start laughing is because he didn't know what all the dialogue was going to be before he saw it. <laughs> so he would be reading along and discovering it as we were discovering it. And that's great. But yeah, he's I think he's great. Now let us move on to our favorite SNL sketches. Let's start with uh, 
some recurring bits before moving to one-offs. Um, I'll kick this one off. Okay. My favorite of all time is, of course, a musical number, uh, the Barry Gibb talk show. <laughs> I, I love it. The singing is actually good. They actually, it's uh, Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake is mm-hmm. is uh, Barry Gibb and Robin Gibb. And for some reason, Barry Gibb is this insanely angry talk show host. <laughs> well, because he was really angry in real life. Yeah, not that angry. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. But, and, you know, the, it, and it's kind of like a crossfire kind of show where it's political talk, but he has this, he'll do his falsetto. He'll be like, like, Jimmy Carter, <laughs> just <laughs> do things with his with his falsetto and just be really goofy with it. Like the whole premise and ex- execution is is fantastic. Well, we can stick with Justin Timberlake then for a second because yeah. um, he did three songs, you know, music videos where they film them, um, which are often the funniest ones, I think, because they can control it a little bit more. Yeah, but, um, with Andy Samberg, and the first one was <laughs> Dick Dick in a Box. <laughs> And, and apparently the story goes that when Sandberg approached him and said, "Will you do this? And, he, and Timberlake just has no fear. So he said, yes, as long as the song is good. So the song is super catchy. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, then they did um, Mother's Day, where they sleep with each other's mothers. <laughs> and, and the last one, it's not gay if it's in a three-way That's with, right. with uh, Lady Gaga. Yeah, right. Um, those are just fucking hilarious. And he's he's had other musical ones where he's the uh, the soup cup, mm-hmm. um, like the homelessville. <laughs> and then the doing the he's next to the Salvation Army Santa, and he's singing about homelessville. Those are those are excellent as well. Uh, another one of my favorites is uh, Brian Fellow with uh, Tracy Morgan. Oh, Tracy a, Morgan was brilliant. Yes, Brian Fellow's Safari Planet, where he's. This guy talking about animals, he doesn't actually know much about animals. And he's this goofy kid that will bust out every now and then. I'm Brian Fellow. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I remember that one. That was a good one. Um, There are my favorite. uh, Sorry, back up. So John Mulaney used to be a writer for the show. Yes. And he's been on several times and he's always good because his stand up is deadly. Um, really, really funny. Um, even this last time after he came back after having a cocaine relapse and all that stuff, he managed to turn the intervention into something hilarious. But um, he comes on and one of the recurring things that they do is they'll do a, a, a sketch that involves a lot of the shows on Broadway. Yeah. But they'll set it in some sort of horrifying New York mm-hmm. environment. My favorite one is Bodega Bathroom. <laughs> so they walk in and, and and he's the he's the guy behind the counter, and I think it's uh it's a uh, Chris Red and um, Pete Pete's Pete, Pete Davis. Davis. customers, yeah, yeah, and I think it's Pete. He says, you know, hey, do you have a bathroom? And just you know, it's like da the music, and Chris Red's like, I don't think I can be your friend anymore. Yeah, and it's just this horrifying thing. But they also do the best job of just going through all the random shit that you find in bodegas. Mm-hmm. And they get to the one point where the whole cast has come out and Cecily uh, Strong just holds up this little thing of flan and it's just, <laughs> and flan! Because because they just have that shit. <laughs> and the arrangements, they they do a lot of hits from Broadway in, in yeah. that sketch and it's fantastic. Um, That one was Bodega Bathroom. They also had like... Airport Sushi. Uh, airport Sushi, uh, Diner, Lobster, right. Subway <laughs> Churros. <laughs> and yeah they gotten a lot of mileage out of that um and i if i'm being completely honest i liked him and a lot of those sketches better before he married that woman who shall not Ah, be named yes just he's he's fixed that or or she fixed it did she i don't know i i think she's gonna suck the life out of him and ruin him i hope not I want to, I, yeah, I hope not too, but I kind of think, feel that he'll, he will be less funny the more time he spends with her, but I yeah. hope that's not the case. Let's hope not. Uh, another one of my favorite sketches is Celebrity Jeopardy. I mean, that, that's just a classic. You had uh, 
Norm MacDonald is, is Burt Reynolds. Um, I mean, I, I forgot who the cast member was that played Connery, but he, he killed it. Um, just his interactions with Will Ferrell, um, talking about Trebek's, uh, Trebek's mother. Oh, I got, right. I got to look that up. <laughs> I can, I can picture him, but I can't think of his name. John Connery, Celebrity Jeopardy. So bad that I don't know that. Ah, Daryl Hammond. Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. I feel horrible. Wasn't he MacGyver or not Magruder, rather? No, that was uh, Will Forte, right? Ah, yes, yes, it was. See, now you're getting the goofy white guys. <laughs> yes, they're kind of interchangeable. <laughs> uh, Daryl Hammond did, uh, he was Clinton for a while. Okay. For a good stretch. Um, or was that Chris Parnell? See, no. Oh, who <laughs> the, no, no, I don't know. But Celebrity Jeopardy, that, that had a lot of, a lot of great ones. Um, are there any one-off sketches that you liked? That Yeah, I was, I was, uh, digging around and just sort of writing down like random notes. And then I went and found shit. And it, it's amazing what you can find. And did I send you the one with Hugh Laurie? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so, you know, ghost hunting shows are hilarious anyway. So in this one, it's Hugh Laurie, uh, Amy Poehler, Bill Hader, and um, Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen. Um, ooh, that leads me to another one. But um, remind me to Fred Armisen. But, um, yes. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Hugh Laurie is like the psychic leading the group in and they've mm -hmm. got all their equipment <laughs> and you're seeing everything in night vision in this room. And it's like, I feel a special presence and everyone's listen, listen for voices. And you just hear this fart. <laughs> he, he lets it rip. He just you lets it rip. Yeah. And then they managed to find a way to replay the sound of the fart because they recorded it. Mm -hmm. Let's play it back. And so Hugh Laurie's mortified, just trying to move on. They just keep playing back and then someone's like, Let's play it back at half speed. <laughs> now it takes yeah. twice as long, and it's a different sound every time. And so this goes on, and they're trying to say, do I hear the name Julian? <laughs> <laughs> and he's mortified. And finally they say, let's back up. We hit and look at the infrared film. And, of course, the, film, the camera zooms in on his button infrared, and you just see the part come out. <laughs> I've seen it before, but I was howling as I was looking at it before I sent it to you. Yeah, that was that's like it's a great one. I always forget that he's not American. Right. They, like I know him the most from like House and V. Right. Right. And when you hear him speaking, is I'm like, whoa, you have an accent. <laughs> like he he might be one of the the best British actors at doing an American accent. Like I don't even he's think he's very good. Yeah. Um. You know, there's another one off that, of course, we have to mention. More cowbell. Oh, jeez, yeah, man. <laughs> that might be one of the best of all time. I got a fever. Yes. The only prescription is more <laughs> cowbell. Well, that's one of the things where I think Will Ferrell was at his funniest. Yes. Because um, he, you know, he can be really goofy and stuff like that, and that's not where I think he's super funny. When he sort of throttles it back, you see just how funny he is. And he just, he was getting angry <coughs> and whacking it harder and harder. And his shirt was riding up over his big belly. Right. And so it's just brilliant. The thing is, um, during dress rehearsal, he wasn't wearing that shirt that he wore live. He had a normal fitting shirt. Oh, God. So when he does the the one that's too small and starts like exposing his belly, like right. his, his castmates were not expecting that. And it, it killed Fallon. I would, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fallon. Fallon had no discipline whatsoever. Yeah. Like he him and Mauricio broke. Sands always broke. Yep. Like, yep. it didn't even have to be that funny. <laughs> like, you know, you were, uh, Oh wait, I want to get back to a one-off. Mm -hmm. um, so Fred Armisen, um, I don't know if you've ever seen any one man shows, I have. Okay. So then you, you've got a, a feel for what they're like. So Fred Armisen does a make-believe one-man show. And it is the funniest damn thing you've ever seen. And it's all about um, when he was living on Long Island and he gets the audition, you know, to, to audition for Lauren Michaels for SNL and the whole thing. And it's so funny. And you can really see how good he is. 
because he would go into that, you know, there's a rhythm that a lot of the cliche one man shows have. Yeah. And he, he'd get you into that rhythm and then cut it and break rhythm. I mean, he's a drummer, so he knows how to do yeah. that. <clears throat> and it's really, really funny to watch. For the people that are watching live or for the people watching the replay, please share some of your favorite sketches, some of your favorite cast members. Either leave a comment now or leave them in the comments section. Uh, Fred Armisen, though, he another one of the musical talents that I really love. Uh, the Prince Show is a fantastic sketch. Um, loved, loved him in those. Uh, he had a great story where Prince was the musical guest. Mm-hmm. And he was saying he he wanted to talk to Prince at the after party, but he, he was so nervous. And like Prince, one of the things Prince requested was this gourmet macaroni and cheese um, setup. And so Fred finally gets the courage to talk to Prince. And he's like, I, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm such a big fan of yours. I, I just really think you're the greatest. And then Prince goes, you know what I think is the greatest? This macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and, <he just> <laughs> leaves. and that's like a Prince thing to say. And how do you he, react to that? <laughs> like, he, he he definitely existed sort of on his own plane. Yeah, he was not he was not one of us. <laughs> no. And uh, I love him for it. And he probably yes. wouldn't have been as, as good or as that's any... why he was so good. Yeah. So those uh those are some one-off sketches, some of our favorite sketches. Let us talk about hosts, because that, that's a big part of what can make the show great or not. Um, there are two kinds of hosts that I really like. Uh, as I mentioned before, Justin Timberlake, because of the, the musical aspect that he brings to it. And he, he does a lot of great stuff with Jimmy Fallon. Like we talked about Barry Gibb Talk Show already. Um, just so many things they do where they incorporate his singing. I think he's, he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about some of your favorites? My favorites, like as a, as a type, my favorite are the ones that are kind of fearless and, you know, they, they will let the show just really make fun of them. Right. Um, so like Hugh Laurie, yeah. you know, the entire sketch was about him farting. So that was brilliant. Um, but uh Zoe Kravitz was someone that I did not think was going to be funny. And she was funny. Um, and she didn't do anything like crazy physical, but they would give her lines of dialogue and she don't care. She will say anything raunchy, whatever, just a straight face, just go right in it. And then she did a, a, a sketch with, uh, it's please don't destroy. Is that the, yeah, yeah, guys? That, yeah. Yeah. So it was a sketch where, the three nerdy guys for, for people who haven't seen it, they're, they're like writers and they all, the three guys are in the room. And every time they do a sketch, kind of the, the running joke is that they're so nerdy. Yeah. Um, and so she was on uh, for Batman where she, you know, she's playing Catwoman. So they got her a cat because they thought it'd be funny to get a cat for Catwoman. They got her a woman cat. A wo- right, a woman cat. <laughs> and, and the cat disappears in their room and they can't find it. And, and it's a comes, tiny room. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, right. It's ridiculously small. There's nothing there. Um, and then she comes in, and it basically turns into this just mayhem as they're trying to find this cat, and they're smashing things. It gets to one point where it's so ridiculous where you cut to one of the nerdy guys, and he's just picking up bottles and throwing them at the yeah. door to break them. Um, they open up the ceiling, like, let's check right. the smash. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And the cat is also apparently, like, super-powered. Because, like, you know, someone's holding it, and all of a sudden, where'd it go? It's just gone. It's weird, yeah. And it would appear, like, behind them. And then, for just to make things more random, um, Paul Dano, was he apparently, was... he was living under their couch. <laughs> he just peeks out under their couch. Oh, Because he was researching a movie about three lame guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, three losers. <laughs> yeah. And it was, like, a picture of them. It's, like, three writers that aren't funny or something. Oh, my God. We got another comment from Carlos. Chris Farley being the motivation speaker guy that always yelled, in a van, down Down by the the river. river. (laughs) That was a great one for breaking, too. Um, David Spade and I think Christina Applegate was the guest for that episode. And Farley was killing them, and they all lost it. Did you see the one where uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Swayze was on? So it was oh, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It was it was him and Chris Farley dancing. <laughs> that was brilliant. That is 
I mean, just the visual. Um, oh yeah, it was. But he he knew he knew how to use his body. Yeah. Um, sort of like uh, Melissa McCarthy. She's lost a lot of weight now, but when she first you know started appearing, she was very heavy. Yeah. Um, but she could move. Do you know? I mean, she could move. Yeah. She could dance. She's and, flexible. Like yeah. She's- and that made it really funny because she she just wasn't like out of shape. She was just big and mm-hmm. she knew how to fucking use it. And it was just and Chris Farley was just like that. He knew how to use it. He knew what he looked like. And that's why the, the motivational speaker guy with the shirt coming untucked. And yeah, know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Farley is also one of the best, but I, I don't bring him up a lot because it, it just makes me sad. Um, yeah, the tribute that uh, Adam Sandler did. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's definitely people are cutting onions in the room when you watch that, but it's very, very loving and sweet. I love that one where he, uh, where Farley interviewed Paul McCartney. <laughs> Do you remember that time when you were in yeah. the Beatles and people were saying Paul is dead? Were you actually dead, <laughs> idiot? <laughs> yeah that was good so good um two of the other hosts that i like and they're the favorite of cast members because they spend the whole week writing with them are alec baldwin and tom hanks um Um, yes they're always good but i I really appreciate that they get down and dirty in there in the writer's room with those guys um most most guests don't do that Mm-hmm. And sometimes it really shows like Alec Baldwin. Some of his stuff um, is legendary. Um, and then if you compare every, that every Christmas, we watch sweaty balls. Yes, <laughs> you have to. Um, if you compare that to, I guess, like I think Jackie Chan was one of the worst guests ever. Wow. <laughs> like some of his stuff is really bad. That's too bad. He, he forced like a singing segment in where he, he sang some Elvis song and you know he's not, not a good. good singer <laughs> it was all about him promoting the movie and i get that that's a big part of what the show is now right and right i don't know i guess when the show started it wasn't like that at all they they got a lot of cool musical acts um george carlin was the first host um, oh interesting he wasn't promoting anything he was just a cool comedian right um, and that that was in his counterculture phase so it was a, a perfect fit for a new sketch show. You know, it's funny because Tom Hanks, you, you mentioned, is not someone that I usually think of as funny, even though he really kind of, you know, came into the public eye doing comedy with like Big and then um, <laughs> Bosom Buddies. Yes. Um, but <laughs> but he he's funny. And he's another one that, that he'll kind of just go there. Um, he was wearing a MAGA hat. He was the one white guy as a contestant <laughs> on Black Jeopardy. And... And everyone was kind of afraid and Keenan is the host and the questions are coming up and everyone's like, oh, God, this racist is going to be awful. And he thought exactly like them. And like one of the questions, what what can you do with a skinny woman? He was like, not a damn thing. And they were like, that's right. That's right. (laughs) And so everyone loved him. And then the the last one was um, something about Black Lives Matter. And he said, I have some thoughts on this. And that was like, no, 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 we're, we're done. We're done. So Zach Morris says, Steven Seagal has to be the number one worst toast ever. You are absolutely correct. Oh, my God. He was a train wreck. and not He is a train wreck. <laughs> in, in general, in life. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that you mentioned uh, Bosom Buddies, because I, I watched that show as a kid, mm-hmm. and I always thought Peter Scolari was <laughs> doing, I thought he was hilarious. I'm like, you know, this Scolari guy's awesome. He's got to get rid of this Hanks dude. This guy sucks. <laughs> He's never getting going anywhere. No, no, yeah, just a, a career that just petered out. Yeah, bad, I made the. Not to say that Peter Scolari had a bad career. He, he had a great no. career, but Tom yeah, Hanks, because he was on Newhart then for a long time. He was in Newhart. He did a lot of um, acting in plays on Broadway, um, and did a lot of great stuff. But few people in the history of the world have a career like Tom Hanks. So no, he's, he's yeah, he's Tom Hanks. Yeah, not not exactly a fair comparison. Right. Um, before we move on, were there any other hosts that you wanted to bring up? Uh, now I'm blanking on everything. You could always come back to it. I'll come back to it if I think of something. <laughs> we're just chatting. 
Oh, you know what? Actually, I do have one. Um, uh, Kit, what's his face? Who played John, uh, John Snow? Yes, uh, Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington. He was, he was very, another. He, yeah, he was another one of those actors that, um, especially because his character is so serious on Game of, and they had one sketch like that, and they really made fun of that. But one of the sketches was him going to a proctologist, and I think it was Leslie Jones, and she, she had these enormous fake nails. And I mean, Jon Snow here, Kit Harrington, is willing to like be on the table and throw his ankles up behind his ears so that she can, you know, with her giant nails. I was like, he's fearless. He's got no fear. And that in itself is just funny to me. He's great. Um, yeah. I, I loved his opening monologue in that episode. And he had mm -hmm. Samuel Tarley was in the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Pete Davidson was dressed up as the Night King. <laughs> and, and his wife was in there. Um, I forgot what her name is. She's in the Time Traveler's Wife right now. Uh, if anyone out there are watching live yeah. and of this, yeah, she's something. She's a wilding. Yes, um, but she's like, so, what are we going to do for money? Now? <laughs> <laughs> um, he had actually Kit Harrington had a great sketch uh, with Seth Meyers on on his show, where he's playing Jon Snow, but mm -hmm. as one of Seth's dinner guests. And he was talking about, he was like, the people I was in charge with killed me, but luckily I was resurrected. <laughs> Not in, but I didn't have time to learn about my true lineage from my father. And, you know, he'd just say, someone would introduce him at dinner and then be like, I'm Jon Snow, I'm a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he totally went for it. It was very cool. Yeah. Um, we have another comment here. Rose Leslie, thank you, Zach Morris. Thank Leslie, you, Zach. Leslie, something. And then Carlos there with her character name on Game of Thrones. But thankfully, Zach Morris had us covered. Now, I want to talk about sketches that make you laugh way more than they should. Um, I got two that, that come to mind. The first is... Uh, is Jim Brewer as Goat Boy. It's not, it's not a great sketch, but I can't help but laugh and I can't help but do it. So the premise is that he was this character from the 80s that was like half man, half goat. And he, he had the horns and the whatever. And he would talk like, hey, it's my eye. <laughs> randomly <laughs> mixed in. Um, at the time, I was working at PC Magazine Labs and we would just do that and drive our boss crazy and he'd be like do you have the script <laughs> it's, it's so stupid um the second one is a will forte sketch uh called the falconer where he, he's a falconer that has these really dumb soliloquies talking to his falcon about his adventures and it, it's so stupid that it, it just makes me laugh yeah. and, Sometimes I wonder, like, how did this get past dress rehearsal? But it did. God, there's a there's a really weird one. And I'm not going to be able to come up with the guy's name. It was one of the tall guys. He's he hasn't been on for about eight years, but he was just this strange guy in the park with weird hair, and he would sort of clamber around almost like a monkey. And there was no point to the sketch. He was just strange. I thought that was funny. Um, there's one. Uh, Kevin Hart was the host, um, and he's funny as hell. Oh yeah, uh, but it, the the premise was um, it's a reunion of the stars from a daytime soap opera, and they all come out and they're they're you know soap opera stars and the music is all da da you know and then heroic, and then the last one to come out is Vanessa Bear, and the music changes to like oompa music with farts in it, and my theme tonight seems to be farts, um, <laughs> and and she's kind of stops and looks around nervously and. And then every time she does anything, that music starts playing. And she finally, she's like, I think my music is different from everyone else's. <laughs> it was the whole sketch was brilliant. But it, it's it's really dumb, but I, I'm five. If it makes you laugh, it makes you laugh. I mean, I, Seinfeld was saying something like, sometimes it doesn't matter if you know why something makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. It just matters that it does. Um, there was another one. I, I, although I think this one is empirically funny, and oddly enough, 
I, I saw when I was just looking it up again to make sure it was what I remembered it was. Um, the Advocate really liked it. And they said that this was a great exam examination of what it's like to be a lonely queer child. But there's a thing, uh, Emma Stone was the host and she's in it. She plays the mother of this very sensitive little boy and it's wells for boys. It's a, it's a wishing well, like from like Fisher Price. And the whole thing is he's just very sensitive and contemplating and all the other boys are running around smashing and, and doing things. And, and it's just, I mean, it's over the top cliches. It's like, and we also have a balcony for when he has announcements and he comes out and it's very theatrical and that one kills me. Emma Stone had a great one where she was playing an extra on a gay porn set. Oh, Jesus. But she was taking the role way too seriously. She's like, why do I only have one shoe? What is my motivation here? It's like, why is why is my boyfriend sleeping with the pool boy? And she's like really going deep into her character. And the director's like, doesn't matter. Just you're done. Right. <laughs> So you mentioned the please don't destroy kids. Yeah. Um, younger writers, uh, two of them are actually second generation SNL talents. Um, uh, Higgins, who is now, who is one of the writers and now works with Jimmy Fallon as his sidekick on his show. One of his sons is in there. And uh, Tim Herlihy, who is also an old SNL writer, one of his sons is in please don't destroy. Oh, that's awesome. It's it's awesome. Kind of weird. Makes me feel old. <laughs> like, it's like when you see a son of an athlete that you liked playing now. It's it's the same thing. What makes me feel old is that you keep calling them kids, and I I I sort of bristle a little bit, and then I realize, well, yeah, they're they're kids. They're yeah, like your early twenties or yeah. something. Yeah, they're barely shaving. <laughs> But those guys do. I, I love their sketches a lot. Um, they had uh, they did one on the good COVID variant, mm -hmm. and you know everything was great. They're like Pokemon are real. He's like this. This variant makes me awesome at keyboards. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel good about the future of the show. In there, you, you know, just thinking back, really, to uh, a good host that you wouldn't think would be funny, or at least I wouldn't have thought he was funny, but he's really good. Um, was Ben Affleck. Yeah. He's very funny. Um, he was, uh, there was a great sketch where it was one of those things where it's like, it's like back in depression era and they talk like this, see? <laughs> and it was just really funny. And he's offering a job to this guy and he's like, show up at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And the guy's like, well, I kind of get up at like eight. And Kate McKinnon was like the little waif slash prostitute. And she kept <laughs> lifting up a brick like she was going to hit the guy to take his money. And then I think he was a gay camp counselor at one point too. And, but he just delivers it with this sort of flat Ben Affleck thing, which just made it fucking hilarious. Zach Morris says there are three normal goths was pretty good. Yes, it was. That is a good one. Um, I think the three sad virgins was better. That was a, a musical. Please don't destroy that. They did with Pete Davidson and uh, Taylor Swift where they make a music video. Um, we should we should get back to Pete Davidson, but if if I'm going yeah. out of order, no, 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 we there's no order. Let's go for it. Okay, because I, I I have thoughts. <laughs> I'm strangely fascinated by that man in general. I think a lot of people are because how? <laughs> yes, um, you know, we but uh, we'll get it. But but good he, for him. He could not act. He was a terrible actor. <laughs> so the only sketch that I thought he was really good in. Um, was uh and they did it with several different hosts was when he was chad yeah and uh they did it with um julia louis dreyfus and benedict cumberbatch and the, the whole premise that people haven't seen it is basically um i think in i think maybe was she i know benedict cumberbatch was like a college instructor and chad was a student and then I feel like it was a similar kind of setup for Julia Louis Dreyfus, but I forget. But they're in love with him, and he's just like, uh huh, uh huh. He's so dumb and empty, <laughs> um, and he did that well. Um, but when he did, uh, when he was at the news desk, uh, sitting next to Colin, yeah, he does, he does well in those where he's yeah. really just playing himself, right? Well, because his yeah. his stand up, you know, that yeah. kind of goofy, awkward stand up, he's very, very funny. Yeah. Um, 
But how he became a phenomenon, I'm just not sure. I, I'm not even that. I'm just amazed at his dating history. <laughs> I think that's God bless that man. Is like, he still? Is he still with Kim Kardashian? I believe so. But I don't know. It's always hard to tell with that guy. Yeah, he's, crazy. he's my goddamn hero. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy kid from Staten Island. Well, actually, him and Yost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Like, how did that happen? God bless their Staten Island guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Pete was good in, as he said, the weekend update. Um, he's good in tape things like mm -hmm. the, the Three Sad Virgins video. He did another music video, uh, Walking in Staten. Yep. Um, and he did that Eminem um, taped video where mm -hmm. it, it, it's like a stand, but it was about PlayStation 5. <laughs> He, he is another good one. Cecily Strong had another uh, good one on Weekend Update. The girl you wish you hadn't uh, oh. talked to at a party. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> That's it's a like, great sketch. Great bit. Oh my <laughs> what do you want for Christmas? No, tell me. Tell me. I want, uh, blah, blah, blah. I want world peace. Yeah. Jeez, Michael. <laughs> like <laughs> some of us only think about themselves. Oh, my gosh. She was awful. She had another one. Um, it was like this kind of really wasted white trash woman, the kind of the kind of person that would get chased by the cops on a show like Cops. Mm. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, yeah. and she would always be talking to Michael Che, and she's like, "Okay, Michael Che," <laughs> and she she plays dumb really well. Um, Her Janine Pirro is fantastic. Oh my fucking god, she's so hilarious. Amazing. Well, she can do voices so well. Yeah. So she. Uh, Oh, did you ever see that one? And Bill Hader was kind of the lead. It was um, it was Al Pacino starring in you know something something Charlie Brown, and it was a live <laughs> stage production for kids. That sounds and, interesting. And, and he comes out, and it's like um, uh, it was a uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Who's the Larry David? Larry David, except that it was it was Martin Short playing Larry David, and Larry David wow. as Linus, and Al Pacino as Charlie Brown. And they get in this whole argument at one point. Go no, fuck you, Linus. No fuck you. And they cut to the audience, and little kids, their eyes are this big. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing was just out of control, swearing. Uh, Cecily Strong um, was the voice of adults, but she was Fran Drescher as the voice of adults. <laughs> wow, it, it was hilarious. On a side note, I always thought that your old boss Dean Bender looked uh -huh. a bit like Larry David. <laughs> A little bit like Larry David. Similar build. Um, very. Around the same Dean. size, but I, not as white in the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Dean and not your hair. And not as much of it, just a, like a disaster in life. <laughs> Here we got porn stars, Moe and Shandon. Yes. Best Cecily Strongskek. That is a good one. That kills me. That kills me. Cecily's great. I loved yeah. her. Uh, she had an Apple TV uh, plus show called Schmigadoon. Oh, yeah. Um, it's her and uh, uh, Keegan Michael Key. They get yeah. trapped in a musical world. And I, I love musical theater. So, all my, I have a lot of uh, actor friends here. And so they were all yeah. geeking out over it big time. That, that's a really good one. My God. We're always, I mean, there's so many, the show has such a long history. I've, I've read a few books about um, SNL. So that that's one of the reasons I appreciate it. Like mm -hmm. just talking about how the show evolved from the, the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny that we were talking about the cocaine period because transitioning out of that was actually one of the tougher times for the show. Oh, I bet. Like, how do we do this without drugs? <laughs> You know, it, you know, it's funny um, talking about just going back to like the initial thing, you know, is it is the show funny or not? Um, it's a it's a, you know, sketch variety show, which mm -hmm. means every. Every comprehensive show is going to have hits and misses among the sketches. Right. Um, which is actually funny because, you know, that like the one they put near the end is always just the really weird one that they're not <laughs> sure if it works. Um so some nights, you know, it's like the writing is off. Things aren't working. you got yeah. maybe Jackie Chan, who's awesome, but wasn't a great host. And so things right. don't work so well. Um, other nights, it's just brilliant.
But even when you think about like the classic guys, you know, Bill Murray and all that stuff, there's some really dumb sketches from back in the day. Oh, uh, sure. And That's... they weren't funny. It wasn't funny. But all you remember is the classics. You remember Eddie Murphy is Gumby. I'm Gumby, damn it. <laughs> then some of it, I mean, was there anything that you found funny from early on that hasn't aged well? Um, yeah, it has and it hasn't. Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Oh, I love that sketch. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's definitely, I think, because he, he recently was on, like in the last year mm -hmm. or two, and he did it again. Um, but it's definitely in a very different context now. Yeah. So that's yeah. funny. You could not do the sketch the way he did it back then. You could not do that today. Right. It's just a different world, different rules. Yeah. Um, but back then he also had another funny one and, and it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't happen. Oh, we are hiccuping 50 minutes in and our only, our first hiccup of the day. Oh my God. Am I back? Yes. You're back now. So, so back then, so Eddie Murphy had this sketch where uh, through some device, I, I don't remember how he was white for a day. <laughs> and he's traveling through New York and it was just, you know, they gave him like this Tom Brokaw hair and wow. <laughs> and he had a suit and it was wonderful being white because the city just opens up for you. He went to get on a bus and to pay and the driver was like, oh, no, you don't have to pay. And it was it was really funny. Did you notice that? And this part might get me in trouble, but. Throughout the history of the show, there there always seems to be like one black cast member that's there for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Like early on, Garrett Morris was there for a really long time. Then it was uh, Tim Meadows, then Tracy mm -hmm. Morgan, and uh, now we have Keenan. There, there's always that one guy that's there for like it seems like eight plus years. Keenan's like in the teens now, isn't he? Has he been there that long? Wow, I think so. That's crazy. Yeah, it's. I, I want him to get a good vehicle. Um, they he had a sitcom that started a year or two ago, and it just looked really dumb. Yeah, I think and, even like Don Johnson was in it. It's weird casting. And that was on NBC his show, right? Yeah, I think he needs a. I think he'd be great on a cable show where he could mm -hmm. get away with more. Yeah, honestly. Um, Che actually has an HBO show. I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, it's called Th that damn Michael Che. <laughs> I think I think he's freaking hilarious. Yes, yeah. he's, he's so dry. I mean, he'll laugh, but it's just his delivery. So, it, and he doesn't break a lot. But that's that's one of the reasons why I like the joke swap so much because yeah. you know those guys don't know what's happening and they manage to get each other. Like, and I think it was the last one they did where Colin wrote him the joke where. Or Che had to say, "Blue lives matter too." Even more, then he just lost it at that. Or oh, Jesus, they always had it. Uh, Yost would always write him that he's a big Jeffrey Epstein fan. Oh, wow! <laughs> and he would Che would be like, "Rest in power, King. <laughs> I'll take it from here." You know who? Uh this is not surprising that she's funny, but Tina Fey, whenever she comes back, is is a genius. She's a great host. She yeah. works with the writers, too. That's another yeah. one. And she knows how the show works, so she right. kind of has an unfair advantage. Yeah, there was a show, and they brought, I think they just brought Amy Poehler in for this sketch. I can't remember if she did other things. But, um, but it was within the last five years, and this sketch, it was a game show called, there are three guys standing up at the podium, they think they're going for a different game, and the Two women come out and it's meet your second wife and all their wives are in the audience. And the joke is, is that the first one comes out and it's like, you know, 25 and, mm -hmm. you know, they're, you know, the wife is middle aged and he's middle aged. And the next one comes out and she's like 12 and, and it was, um, and Bobby was the, was the guy. And she's like, um, what are you like? She's like, horses. I said, like, Oh God. Everyone's dying. Um, and the last one to come out was like a woman, young woman that's in college, very pretty. And the last guy goes, oh, that's not so bad. Um, 
but that wasn't the wife. She was carrying the wife already in her womb. She had been recently impregnated. And it was just, Ooh. oh my God, it was just merciless and really funny. Man, there was one cast member that I believe died during E3. And that, that was kind of like a big... When was this? News. Like, I think it was one of the Atlanta ones, even... Um, Considering the amount of booze that was flowing through everyone, I'm not surprised. It was no, though it was it was during E3. It, it's not related. It just happened to be at that time. That was when yeah. Phil Hartman died. Oh yeah, his and, wife killed him. Yeah, and I remember that was like a big thing at the show where everyone was talking about it. He was another. He had he had some great characters too. Very funny dude. Very funny dude. But apparently not funny to his wife. <laughs> Yes. He had that sketch where it was uh was it? it was like Tonto Frankenstein and oh who who was the third one? Tonto Frankenstein, it was him and Tarzan. Oh, God. <laughs> you know who's another funny host? Um John Hamm. Hmm. John Hamm is really funny. He had a sketch um, called John Ham's John Ham, and he's in a public restroom, and you open up the stall, and at the toilet paper roll, it's just a roll of ham lunch meat. <laughs> it's like, the next time you're, on, you're in the John, you need a piece of high-quality ham. It just pulls out. God, it was amazing. See, he's an example, as you were saying earlier, about being fearless and not afraid to make fun of yourself. There's, um, there's one... Uh, I think there were a couple where like Halloween specials where Bill Hader was Vincent Price doing a Vincent Price Halloween special. <laughs> yeah. And on one of them, John Hamm played gosh, one of the like Richard Burton type actors from way back in the day that were just drunk 24 seven. And so he, ro he rolls in and he shows up and he's, he's just hammered. And, um, and so we're making all these references and he's, you know, Vincent Price is trying to get, you know, this is a kid's show. And he's like, I've already pissed myself. And then he just, <laughs> he shouts out. He's like, where are the whores? <laughs> and someone, one of the cast members was Liberace. And so he and Liberace were going to go out looking for women. <laughs> it, was, it was very funny. Yeah, and totally fearless. So do you think this show will end in our lifetime or will it keep going on? How old is Lauren Michaels? I don't know. I, I think, will tell you. I think, I think that's a factor. Hmm. You think he, he keeps it up? He's the one protecting everyone? He is 77. Yeah, that's not great. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lauren. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, he, he's obviously, he's a, he's a power player at NBC um, and has just, he's so established. Um my concern would be that they would continue on for a few years and flounder hmm. unless they have a, a strong, um, strong person at the helm, you know, with the vision. Um, not that he was always great. Right. You know, there were, there were periods that were very frustrating for me where um, they would get in this habit of like every sketch was like four and a half minutes long. So some sketches would have like a joke. Right. It was repeated for four and a half friggin' minutes. Um, they seem to be looser now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it'll continue to be. It'll be a shame because, I mean, it's been with me since I can remember. Zach Morris says Keenan should get the keys when it's time. He's been there long enough. That is true. I think that's a great idea. Talk about knowing the show. Yeah. You know, and what I've heard about Keenan too is that. Um, Everyone loves working with him because he's the guy on set who just helps everyone. If you're working on a sketch or a bit yeah. or something like that, he's just there to help. He seems like one of those glue guys that helps keep everything together. Yeah, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's kind of a great utility player, but he's like the, he's like the team captain who's not the fastest on the field, but you right. need him, right? You know, very right. much the heart. In those sketches you mentioned, those musical sketches, he always does well in those, in, yeah. in that bodega bathroom sketches. Oh, God, yes. um, he had What yeah. Up What up With That? I, I love that sketch. That one drives me nuts. 
It's yeah. like, it's funny, but I'm like, it's, you know, you were talking earlier. It's like, it's really dumb, but it's funny. It's like, it's, I'm just like, this is so dumb, but I'm laughing. Yes. I mean, the, there's so many things in that. One of my favorite things is that dancing character that Jason Sudeikis plays yeah. in that sketch where he just jumps on the camera, starts uh-huh. dancing, jumps off. And so uh-huh. many little things about that. You know, speaking of music, just going back to uh, yeah, something about the women in the last bunch of years, um, and it's been going on for I don't know, at least five, six years, because um, they had some of the cast members we haven't had for a little while, like Nassim and stuff. Um, but the the women doing these like sexy music videos, mm-hmm. and they'll have like five or six of them. And the first one was I, they they seem to theme them around holidays and stuff. So the first one was Christmas, and it was about going home with your boyfriend for Christmas, but the song is let's do it in my twin bed. (laughs) And it's just Jimmy Fallon was the guest on that one. And Oh my God, it is funny. And it's like, they're all dressed in like, you know, when we cut to like the music and they're on set, they're all like dancing raunchy and they're wearing leather and like thigh high boots and shit. Um, And then we see the awkwardness of, you know, they're trying to, you know, get it on in this tiny little bed in a room that still has, you know, like Disney posters on the wall and, and all that. Um, and then they have this brilliant thing at the end where they, someone's like, let's take it back. And they zoom in on like Kate McKinnon as an eight year old, her picture on the wall. And they do, they, they slide through the pictures of all the ladies when they're like eight years old. And we've just had this raunchy thing and it's just so wrong and it's fucking hilarious. And they finally, they get to little baby 80 at the end and you just die. Cause she's like the sweetest, thing you've ever seen and she just had this raunchy thing where she was humping this guy in the bed it was funny so earlier we were talking about melissa uh, via senor being underutilized she did i think she's done this sketch twice the dirty talk sketch uh she did it once I've seen it. with aziz ansari i think uh-huh. the other one was with donald glover mm-hmm. where you know she's the girlfriend the other the host is her boyfriend and she's like let's let's mix things up and try to do some dirty talk. And, you know, she has that high, silly voice. Right. And and she'll be like, her dirty talk is so bad. She's like, yeah. It's like, you're my brother. We shouldn't be doing this. (laughs) (laughs) We'll stay stuff like that. She had one where like, she tries to do a Bill Cosby voice. She's like, why don't you tell me to take my pudding pops? (laughs) Oh, Jesus. <laughs> She's like, no, don't do Bill Cosby. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so far when I think she's been funniest is when they, they bring her onto the news desk and they let her do impressions. Her impressions are amazing. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. And she just goes from character to character to character. Um, but uh, hopefully she'll she'll get a little more high profile, especially now that some of the bigger name women have left. Right. And she's been around for a little while. No, that's one of the interesting things in the books. They talk about what a pressure cooker it is, you know, trying to write your stuff and get it on, trying to get your performances over while still being part of an ensemble and and trying to do what's right for the team. And doing it without the cocaine (laughs) sounds really hard. (laughs) They, They actually, they had a funny sketch and it's within the last decade and it was someone doing coke, um, I think it was whoever the guest was, it was a woman. But the funniest thing was, you know, she's bouncing around because she's doing coke. And for anyone who's ever been around anyone who, who, or who has done coke, but she looks up, she says, I have so many ideas. <laughs> and that's very cocaine. <laughs> and it was just, and yes, I think this helped them back in the 70s. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely did. But I don't, I don't think that was exclusive to SNL either. I think that was just yeah. comedy in general. I mean, look look how Robin Williams and Richard Pryor were back in, in those days. Oh, they were, God, yeah. And, you know, what they what they became. I mean, maybe those weren't the best examples because they both died younger than they should have. Yeah. But, <coughs> well, it'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. It'll kill you. Yeah. 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 But it's a... Yeah, Vanessa Bayer, I read a, an interview with her once just talking about the pressure of doing mm-hmm. the show. And, I mean, she just talked about it. It's like, you know, you work Monday through Friday. You know, you're working your ass off to get the things written mm-hmm. and rehearsed um, every time you're adapting to a new host. 
Um, Saturday, of course, is the production. And then Sunday, basically, she was just like, and I'm just in my apartment in sweatpants, just ordering some food. Yeah. And it's like the glamorous life of an actor in, in New York. And it's like, no, they're just, it's like doing, you know, repertory theater. They're just grinding it out. Yeah. It's hard. And a lot of people don't know that they do the show twice. Um, they have the dress rehearsal also in front of an audience. And then they do the live one, obviously. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, they make it look easy and it ain't easy. No, I, it's incredibly difficult. Yeah. And so that's why those guys have, I have so much respect for those guys and gals. Yeah. And I think that's a perfect way to, to leave things off unless you had anything else you wanted to add. No, I think we've sort of gone back and forth over the timeline. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was just fun. It was fun hanging out and, and talking with you. Yeah. Now, now it makes me wish that the season wasn't over. And Carlos says, like pimping, it ain't okay. easy. That's right. Yes, just like true. pimping. It's just like pimping. Um, if you want to learn more about John's books, please go to johnfosterfiction.com. If you want to drop him a line or ask him about anything that he said on today's show, check him out on Twitter at John Foster Fick. And join me on Thursday where I will have another Brooklynite. Uh, playwright Matthew Freeman will be joining me to talk about the season uh, finale of Obi-Wan. Oh, right on. Yeah, I'm so excited for tonight. Tuesday is my favorite day now with Obi-Wan and Ms. Marvel. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for that. But I, I'm very excited that you hung out with me today. Thanks so this much. This was great. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. This was a blast. Yeah, we're, we'll do this again. We'll find other some other thing. That Something silly. Use. Yeah. <laughs> cool. John, awesome, man. Care. Thanks, Ray.